Hey guys, welcome to a Steven Universe recap vlog. I used to call these reaction videos, but a lot of people are like, where's the live commentary? Where's the footage? And that's a good way for your channel to get shut down. So I'm not doing that. So now they're recap videos, not reactions, even though I still feel like me reacting to the episode should be counted as a reaction. Anyways, this last week's episode, I'm a little bit behind, sorry guys, uh, Open Book, the episode where Stephen and Connie just finished a book series that Stephen and Connie have been reading since the beginning of the series, and um, Connie's not super happy with the ending. She uh, feels like it's a little watered down and uh, too mainstream, while Stephen may like it. Uh, Stephen feels like he needs to uh, make her happy and wishes that he can make her a new ending to the book, which opens up Rose's room, a special room designed to give Stephen any of his desires. They go into the room and they're able to recreate the book ending uh, by creating, basically the room's like the Matrix where uh, Stephen can wish for something and a cloud will turn into it. So Stephen gets his uh, Falcon outfit, he creates a comic book, a comic book, I don't know why I keep saying comic book, I've done this, rec this recording a couple of times and every time comic book, uh, he creates a costume shop for Connie to create her own outfit because Connie can't just wish stuff because the room is designed for Steven exclusively at least that's what's implied so Steven gets a little impatient and wishes for Connie to get out of the costume shop so he can see her and out comes Connie who wearing a beautiful outfit dresses one of the characters from the book they go on and she asks Steven to start creating the ending of the series which makes sense since Steven controls the room but Steven keeps making these ridiculously dumb plot lines but Connie uncharacteristically is like yeah, okay whatever you want do it um, Steven slowly figures out that the Connie that he's been hanging out with is not actually Connie, but a fake cloud Connie created by the room to please Steven. Um, he doesn't want her to do anything that he, he wants her to be her own person. And so the, the, the room starts glitching and now it has a sentient bean that doesn't just do what Steven wants. Um, now this bean turns into a wedding dress version of Connie who, uh, dresses the character and is chasing Steven, trying to convince Steven to tell Connie how he truly feels. Which turns out to be not, it's a bait and switch here. It's not that he loves Connie, which he does, obviously, but that he loves the ending of the book, which, um, the fake Connie forces Stephen to tell her. Uh, fake Connie disappears now that, uh, it's out in the open, and Stephen is worried about Connie looking down upon him, which Connie's just like, no, no, of course not. You can like the book. <laughs> of course you'll like the book. You're Stephen. <laughs> and, uh, that's how the episode ends. Basically, this is a really weird episode in multiple different ways. First off, it didn't actually air in the right order. This one actually takes place before the Stephen Bomb week, which kind of feels like a regression between the two characters. The relationship uh, of Connie and Stephen doesn't seem as close as they once were uh, in this episode, and mostly because they haven't had this adventure yet. It, it takes place before dis full disclosure, where they seem a lot closer. The other thing is, so, that the worries me about the next few episodes, because I know at least three of them, counting this one, is going to be past episodes played out of order, so they get Stephen Bond Week out earlier. So, uh, that's going to be interesting. The other thing is that this episode strikes a very interesting comparison to Rose's Room, which is an episode that aired way earlier in the season, and uh, basically in that episode, it's the same exact plot, except for Remove Connie and just add more plot about Stephen Kent getting what he wants. And the moral of this episode is that, like your opinion, you can have your opinion, and don't worry about other people looking down upon you for having it. Enjoy what you enjoy. Though there is a little bit of a, uh, you can't always force people to like what you like plot in there, which is very similar to the original Rose's Room, where Stephen learns that he can't always get what he wants. Uh, so it's, it's kind of, there's some parallels there, uh, obviously it involves the same room, but it's still kind of the same moral kind of being, uh, played around with there. I think the moral of you can like what you like could be played around and done a little bit better in this episode, uh, and feel less like Rose's Room, the original episode. Also, I felt like this episode could have gotten a lot creepier easily, uh, especially since Rose's Room was very eerie. This one's a little bit more cheerful. I don't know if it was just like one of those things where it's like, man, we've done some dark episodes lately. Let's, uh, let's do some bright, colorful ones. But in the original Rose's Room, Steven creates uh, the entire Beat City, and it's like the Matrix. It can't hold up all the stuff that's going on, and so everyone starts glitching and gets really creepy, and they have like these stone faces, and it's... It, this one, I was expecting Connie to, like, start twitching and, like, uh, maybe, uh, t you know, start crawling with her hand, or, you know, hand standing, but their head, like, moves up to her top of her body with her feet's moving. I was just expecting some, like, Japanese horror stuff, but instead we just kind of got this, uh, this somewhat tame fight scene between fake Connie and real Connie. Um, and which was really interesting is Connie immediately saw there's a fake version of her 
and cut that bitch down. Just whoosh, done. No, none of that. No questions asked. No, like, so Steven, why am I in a wedding dress? You know, uh, maybe it's the fact that she kind of already realizes that Steven might like her, like her, and that might be what's going on. But uh, it's just it's, no questions. Just whoosh, cut the bitch down. All right. Good job. Um, and by the way, it's actually very interesting. There's a Tumblr post where someone's like, you know, Steven Universe, they fight evil versions of themselves a lot. And there's like, um, there's the water evil versions of them from, um, Ocean Gym. There's, uh, Fake Pearl fighting Real Pearl, uh, to show how to do swordsmanship. There's Steven killing himself, uh, with the Time Turner thing. There's this episode. It just, in this episode, there is a lot of <laughs> killing yourself. It's just very interesting. Speaking of which, just in cartoons in general, there's a, like, between Rick and Morty, Gravity Falls, and Steven Universe, there's, like, uh, there's, like, a note where it's, like, all right, every cartoon that features a boy as a main character must watch himself die in some way. It's really weird. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like, I was expecting this to get a little bit darker, but it stayed pretty, pretty nice. I do like the bait and switch, though. I like that it wasn't just directly talking about Steven's feelings for Connie. I think that would have been a little cliched. And with it switching it to the whole relationship thing with the, the book was a lot cooler. And uh, I think this is a really good note because, like, I have some personal relationship stuff that kind of parallels with this. Coincidentally, within the same week this happened, I was talking to a girl we went on a date. And, like, all she did was, so what do you want to do? And I'm like, uh, okay. We wound up watching, like, ten episodes of Community because uh, she... She wouldn't tell me she wanted to do something else. So I'm like, all right. And so I just kept playing them, kept playing them, you know. Uh, but, you know, it's like after each episode, it was like, hey, do you want to play video games? Do you want to go out and do something? Do you want, or do you just want to watch more community? Whatever you want. And it's like, that's a little frustrating. I think uh, for a relationship to work, there, there needs to be some kind of contrast between the two people and what they what they like. Obviously, if you find someone that that likes the same stuff you do there's there's going to be like a smooth more smooth sailing with it but at the exact same time a uh, story uh, like especially from a story standpoint relationships uh without friction without conflict are boring uh i mean there's nothing exciting happening which i guess is nice but especially in the story standpoint like a tv show you have to have conflict you have to have uh two people kind of butting heads for there to be a resolution and make it satisfying um, so it's one of those things where I, obviously having someone that likes everything you like and just going with you is awesome. But at the same time, you also don't want them to be just a puppet and just someone that just, you know, does whatever you want, you know. Uh, you want them to uh, you do other things and go against the grain. And I, I think disliking certain things helps with that. It, it definitely sparks conversation a little bit more than just, I like this, me too. I like this, me too. Uh, but now I'm talking more about personal life and not even about the show or the app. But I think that's what makes Steven Universe so good is the fact that the characters are super relatable. They they do go through different things, especially watching older episodes. Um, you know, the ones where a little bit more, less, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, less stakes were involved. Uh, especially now, after Steven Bomb, the show is definitely in a different like era in it. And um, th th we definitely care about the characters a lot more. But uh, going back, there's definitely little hints and such, and uh, I think Steven Universe always had that that relatable element between the characters. They all have conflicts, they all have flaws, and they all have raw emotions, and those seep through here, and that's what makes them like us. And uh, this is why Steven Universe is one of the shows that I am personally emotionally invested in um, a lot more than I probably should be for cartoon characters made of, like, eight lines, so... Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, sorry about it being super late. Uh, more or less what happened was I just released the Be a Puppy Cat video. I didn't want to, like, air episodes or videos back to back to back, and then here I am this week doing it anyways. Um, but most of the time, when you air videos too close to each other, they might, like, cannibalize each other's views. And, uh, but you guys wanted it. I saw a couple of comments saying, like, when's the vlog coming? The vlog is here. Uh, for the people that want Tristan to be on these vlogs, he's a busy man. And, uh, uh, we, we are recording a, a podcast sometime this week, though. So we'll definitely be talking about everything that happened in the Steven Universe, plus a lot more. Probably something Power Rangers oriented, because he likes Power Rangers. We also went to a convention and a bunch of other stuff, so it's all exciting. One thing I've been doing at the end of my videos is making sure to tell you guys to stay awesome. I don't know if that's a good catchphrase or not, but I'm trying to coin it. If you guys could think of a better catchphrase for the end of my videos, I know that seems super lame and, like, super uncreative. You can't even come up with your own catchphrase, Steven? Really? Hmm? 
Uh, but if you guys think of something that'd be cool, like a little outro or intro, I'm trying to I'm, I'm trying to brand the channel, get get you guys in on some in jokes here. You know, with the channel, you're supposed to you're supposed to have a cool intro and you're supposed to have a cool outro, and that's things that people get adjusted and they like hearing. I'm trying to think those out. I'm trying to think of some catchphrases. But uh, this video is going long enough. I'm not even talking about Steven Universe anymore. So uh, leave comments, let's have a conversation down below, and uh, I'll see you guys soon. And stay awesome soon. And stay awesome.